Welcome to ICC and the Power Vault Systems. In this demonstration, we're providing a training with iSCSI Auto Failover. And to do this, we're going to need two Power Vault systems from ICC. If you look up the window here, I've got a Power Vault 1, and over here on this server is Power Vault 2 with the IP address of 192.168.10 network, and the last IP address is 223. And the Power Vault one is 222. Well, we're losing the using the latest version of 3530 in 64-bit mode, which comes standard with all the Power Vaults. One of the first things we want to do is go to Setup and in Network and in our interfaces. We want to make sure that the names are different. So here's where we're going to put Power Vault one, and of course on the secondary system, it will be Power Vault two. Now, once we have the Power Vault systems up with the interfaces, ETH0 and ETH1 are presented. Uh, you can also add the DNS server and also gateway IP address as well. So for the ETH1 and ETH2, it's very important to understand that each of the interfaces must have separate IP uh, networks or different subnets. And that would be for ETH0 and 1, and also for the virtual IP address that we will be discussing later. So here for ETH0, I have 192.168.10.222. And if we look at the Power Vault 2 system, that will be our secondary server, which will have an IP address of 192.168.10.223. And when we establish, let's go to ETH2, and here it's 1. Dot 223 and for the secondary for a primary system for a replication server we're going to have 1.22 once we've established this um, pretty much we can go forward with setting up in the configuration volume manager because we have to configure our volumes uh, in this case we've already have an available unit here we have 233 gig of course keep in mind that this can be in hundreds of terabytes and even petabyte ranges, especially in 64-bit mode. We're going to go ahead and enable this, and we can have many of the units available, so you, you're not limited to just one. We're going to do this on the Power Vault 2 system as well. So I'm going to go to Configuration and Volume Manager, and in our volume groups, again, we'll see unit S000. So for future information is that uh, we can have S001 all the way as, to, as you see the number scheme here, you can have many. All right, let's go back to our first power vault. And we are still waiting to format it. And then we'll go back to the second one and see if it, there it is, VG00. And again, we can have multiple volume groups. And here we have the ability to draw from the logical volume manager to create our volumes. Let's go back. There we go. And let's create an iSCSI target. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use the volume replication. We're going to select File I.O. And we're going to use initialization. Now, the the reason why we're selecting file I.O. is because VMware recommends us and it's better for performance and we're using the system cache. The initialization is similar to a low-level format. So we're going to do something very, very small because it takes time. As you will know, if we're a low-level format, uh, you're writing with all zeros and that can take some time. So while we're waiting for that to complete, let's go to our Power Vault 2 system and in VG0 again we'll keep the same process. Now bear in mind being that you're doing replication it is absolutely imperative that the volumes that you're replicating are of exact equal sizes and they need to be in the same 64-bit mode you cannot replicate 32 to a 64-bit mode you cannot replicate file I.O. to block I.O. Um, it's, it's just not feasible into this feature and you wouldn't want to do it in the first place. So we'll create that with our initialization and file I.O. and you'll notice that once it's completed the 
you know, first he noted is a logical volume zero zero x, and of course you can see we can create hundreds, if not thousands, of different logical volumes. You can create NAS volumes, high SCSI volumes, fiber channel volumes, and here you can see even create snapshots. So he, what you're seeing here, he notes that it's checked mark for this L logical volume zero zero. The type is iSCSI volume file I/O, and it's denoted with replication. And here it's initializing and it's telling us the percent that is completed. So if you're looking at something, the max currently right now with this version is up to four terabytes. In the next release in September, we will be able to replicate up to 16 terabytes per logical volume. So this LV00 that we have can be a 16 terabyte logical volume. In future releases, possibly at the end of the year, Q1, we will be able to replicate exceedingly greater sizes than 16 terabytes. All right, let's verify that uh, the Power Vault 2 is completed. It's at 74%, which is fine. We can go ahead and continue on Power Vault 1, and let's go ahead and set up our volume replication. So right underneath the volume groups, you'll see this volume replication function. Here we want to set our primary server, which we're going to denote as the 10.22, and we're going to set that as source. And then we're going to add the mirror server, which is our secondary server. Uh, we're going to set that to be the IP address of 192.68.10.22. What this is going to do is allow us to create a replication task. What we need to do is go back to our Power Vault 2 system, and it's completed, verified. Go to our volume replication piece, and we're going to set this as the destination server. And we will add the IP address of the primary system, which is 222. Now, let's go back to the Power Vault 1 system and let's add the test. Power Vault. We're going to click on the scan. It will find it through the IP address of the mirror and it sees it. Here we have a bandwidth setting. Uh, in most cases, the default is fine. Uh, with 1 gigabit uh, NICs, you can go up to six, 60 megabytes per second. Um, you can do bonding and add a little bit more, or use 10 gig E. Uh, asynchronous, you cannot use asynchronous with auto failover. Uh, if you're using asynchronous mode, it's best just to not create a task for it and uh, let it run continuously. All right, let's create our task. And as you see on the bottom, we now have the ability to start it. And what this is going to allow us to do is to replicate block by block. So right now it's, it's replicating all the block sectors of the logical volume to the secondary system. Once it's occurred, it'll let you know that it's in process of completion. You'll be able to be able to tell of the consistency. So right now it denotes it to what's the destination IP address and the protocol type is synchronous. What we want to do is find out the status of the replication to verify if it is in consistency with the logical volumes for both systems. So what we're going to go is to status and then tasks. And here you'll see the running task which we created, uh, the power vault, and it is almost complete, another two minutes to, uh, it'll fluctuate up and down, but our average rate is about 44 megabytes per second. Um, and you'll see that the logical volume, LV00, is consistent, and the destination volume is still receiving the information to be synced up. So at this time, we've got a few more minutes uh, until it completes, and let's go ahead and go into our configuration, and let's go to iSCSI Target Manager, and let's set up our task here of creating a new target. So on the Power Vault, one that we're on, we're going to just select the default 
and there you see target zero. Keep in mind you can create many targets up to 255 and you can create many logical volumes in that target. Now one of the things you want to keep in mind is that when you're doing the auto failover you must have the exact target name and the SCSI ID and LUN number. I want to make this perfectly clear you do not want to use the right back feature. Enabling the right back feature what happens is is that the we're not replicating the cache so if you're using auto failover with VMware we highly recommend do not use the write back function with iSCSI auto failover in VMware environments in fact you might want not want to look at doing that at all uh, with any of your high production servers so what we want to do is we